Okay, um, thanks everyone for still sticking around. I'm here to present uh, our paper uh, uh, titled Equilibrium Aware Shape Design for Concrete Printing, which is as <clears throat> part of the PhD, the joint PhD that I'm doing at the Block Research Group uh, with my uh, one of my advisors being uh, from Zahadi, the architects. Um, <clears throat> so the presentation is structured so, like uh, I'll briefly uh, situate the uh, paper and the research in the context of rapid evolution of 3D printing, but more specifically the lack of any design uh, exploration tools in, 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 uh, currently, and therefore the design-related uh, objectives and the kind of novel insight that could uh, perhaps aid in achieving those objectives. This yields the relevant prior, uh, prior work, uh, and then also the, the, the current approach that has been proposed in the, in the paper and also being used in the research, uh, to conclude with like, the current results uh, and, and a brief outlook on like, perhaps uh, other areas of application. So starting with the context, like as most of you are aware, uh, there's been a rapid evolution of interest and technology in 3D printing, uh, starting from the work of uh, perhaps uh, the contour crafting company in 1996, especially in the last decade, there's been uh, quite a lot of interest and, and growth. Uh, <clears throat> this kind of results in like not only long-standing um, researchers and like commercialized technology like Enrico Dini in, uh, in Italy and University of Loughborough in the UK um, and also uh, uh, University of Southern California, uh, but also kind of results in a lot of uh, new entrants into the field, especially in the last two, three years, including X3 here in Paris. Having said that, it can be really noted that like most of the effort uh, of the researchers have, have been spent on like material engineering, hardware technology, and so on and so forth, like uh, result <clears throat> and uh, the aspects of architectural design and especially design exploration is often neglected. And, and this paper and also the research aims to uh, address, address that aspect of architectural design exploration. So this uh, leads to the design <clears throat> motivated like objectives. Um, so the main objectives are to provide geometric guidance on the feasibility of printing uh, some of the shapes. Um, uh, and the second main objective is, uh, as I mentioned previously, the exploration of the associated design space. So the main insight that um, uh, we are using in like kind of addressing these design-oriented um, objectives is to kind of apply um, methods of design and analysis from unreinforced masonry to the design of uh, an analysis of geometries of 3D printing. In other words, to scale down and adapt the bricks of uh, masonry uh, to micro, virtual micro blocks uh, in, in 3D printing. And this guiding analogy is well suited for uh, the dominant material properties of co uh, printed concrete. Uh, it is very high in compressive strength, uh, relatively low flexural strength, um, and the unique things that like the research also has to address that like uh, there's a peculiar orthotropic behavior to, to printed concrete uh, and the other main thing the, uh, the research uh, and approach has to address is the fact that the time hardening uh, of, of, the, of the material, time-based hardening of the material, which is usually not addressed in the design phase of uh, masonry structures. Um, turning to the specifics of 3D printing, there are two main problems, uh, two main uh, particular phenomena that need to be addressed. One is the stability of the printed shape itself, uh, and, and the second is the feasibility or the fabrication feasibility of printing it in the first place. First is a problem of aligning uh, or developing geometries aligned with the f expected loading conditions and force flow, as in any other uh, compressive structure. Uh, and second is additionally dependent on time, material, rheology, etc. So as the research outline um, outlines, and, and, and the paper also outlines this, uh, a kind of interactive design explorer and the underlying computational framework uh, that allows for exploratory design while addressing the structural and fabrication aspects. Uh, in other words, equilibrium aware shape design for co uh, printed concrete or concrete printing. So 
<coughs> the design explorer and the computational framework are necessary infrastructure, again, to emphasize, to explore the design space associated with these constraints. Um, so <coughs> this kind of leads to the relevant prior work. Uh, the research operates in, in, the, in the contemporary paradigm of so-called architectural geometry, whereby complex structural and manufacturing aspects are uh, computationally represented as geometric constraints uh, or properties. Uh, more specifically, given the previously mentioned insight of relating unreinforced masonry to the printed concrete, significant precedent work stems from the field of computational masonry, with several interactive toolkits being developed, uh, have been developed already in ETH, MIT, and elsewhere. And more specifically, the, the research aims to extend the rigid block equilibrium methods developed uh, at the NCCR and block research group previously and presented here um, in, in this conference like a couple of years ago. The research adapts this framework and extend it, uh, to the u extends its use within uh, time hardening kind of scenario of printed concrete. Briefly to summarize the method like the RBE method or the rigid equilibrium uh, method uh, computes the contact interfaces and the necessary forces to keep the given configuration of blocks uh, in, in, in equilibrium. So <clears throat> the proposed approach uh, is two-pronged. Two, two, um, two main aspects being uh, first is to synthesize the printing paths themselves along which the material will eventually be laid uh, or so-called task graphs. Uh, and then the second is evaluating the stability or the feasibility of uh, those generated uh, printing paths or task graphs. Uh, so starting with the synthesis of the task graph, um, one main point to note is in current, currently in all 3D printing uh, software, like there's like a usually explicitly represented mesh uh, and which is cut up either al along horizontal sections or along some curvature. Uh, uh, some, some sort of scalar field. Um, so in, in other words, the geometry is explicit, but the printing paths are kind of implicitly derived from, from, the, from the geometry. Uh, what the proposed approach is uh, suggesting is to uh, do the inverse, to explicitly generate the printing paths and re implicitly represent the geometry as a collection of uh, task graphs. Uh, we believe this addresses the indirection that exists. In, in other words, uh, it's a kind of forward approach of generating the feasible geometry as opposed to uh, starting with the uninformed geometry and cutting it up. Um, so, like, so we're proposing a forward approach as opposed to uh, inverse approach to modeling of, of geometry. So the synthesis itself is a two-step process. First, a base curve is extracted as the level set, uh, level curve of a scalar field. Uh, like so, and, and uh, adequately sampled as per like machining, machining par uh, parameters of speed, etc. Uh, secondly, okay, there's supposed to be a video here, but never mind. Um, <clears throat> so that base curve is evolved through time uh, to generate the 3D geometry. Um, and and this, this base curve, when it is evolved through time, um, you could also evolve it along non-vertical directions, um, uh, as, as, as already shown in the work of Gaudi in Sagrada Familia uh, and, and in computer graphic methods and uh, usually used in character design. Um, so turning, uh, turning to the uh, stability of the task graph itself, um, to, to ask, uh, two, two, uh, two groups of methods coming from the idea of rigid blocks uh, become relevant. One is uh, called the rigid body dynamics uh, and the other is rigid body equilibrium as I already previously mentioned. And rigid body dynamics is particularly useful in the kind of animation of, uh, in animation scenarios, whereas rigid blo block equilibrium is, uh, is useful uh, in the sense that it exposes the degrees of freedom and gives, uh, makes, aware, makes the designer aware of like the various um, in, uh, geometric information. Uh, hence, like the proposed research extends the rigid block uh, equilibrium methods 
uh, and not the, uh, not the rigid body dynamics uh, aspect, which might be um, uh, used in a kind of animation scenario. Um, as it turns out, like both methods share a common mathematical framework uh, with the RBE computing the unknown forces that will keep a uh, set of blocks in equilibrium and uh, the RBD computes the unknown accelerations at every time step of the simulation. So um, in that sense, um, uh, extending this to, um, to so um, printed concrete, in other words, soft rigid uh, block equilibrium, which is what is being proposed in the paper, um, involves adequately representing this time-dependent uh, stress-bearing capacity of, of the material. In other words, or graphically, uh, the orange lines here is, is the forces that are computed by the RBE, um, which will keep those blocks in uh, equilibrium, and green is the uh, ability of the, of the material to afford uh, or offer the, those reactions. Uh, and it can be noted that like uh, the orange or is a property of the geometry of the uh, and the position and the orientation of the blocks uh, and and the green uh, is time dependent property as can be seen uh, in this video so the orange changes based on like the relative position and orientation of the blocks in this two block example and um, the green uh, the ability of the uh, proper uh, material to offer those reactions is dependent on both uh, the parti particular material characteristics, uh, which can be derived from uh, literature or can be uh, assumed, um, and, and also dependent on time. So <clears throat> the current implementation and results, uh, as far as the software goes, uh, it's kind of like uh, this at this stage, like you can quickly evolve these geometries in time. Uh, in time. Uh, this uh, kind of shows the video that wasn't working previously. Um, so we can quickly generate a wide variety of shapes. So the design space is indeed quite, uh, quite, quite uh, diverse. Um, and then like you can also evaluate. Uh, so so these, these are just like the range of design options that can be produced by varying a few simple parameters. Uh, showing the extent of the design space. Um, and in, in terms of the evaluation of the task graph, it's a two-layer example. <coughs> First, it computes the contact interfaces, and subsequently, it computes the necessary forces. Um, and then you, the desi designer can either decide to vary the, the shape or, or do necessary, take necessary action to, uh, once the, the information is presented. So either stack the curves or do, do, uh, do things as necessary. And then subsequently, G code is present, uh, produced on the manufacturer side uh, and then results in, in, in the 3D printed output. Um, some results, some more results generated in this, uh, using this design framework. Uh, so this is a typical uh, extrusion along the Z direction. Uh, already there's like enough uh, variety possible with undercuts and overhangs and so on and so forth. Uh, and also we recently started testing uh, kind of uh, gradated, uh, so non-horizontal evolution of the, of the base curve, um, uh, resulting in uh, a variety of shapes that can all be uh, kind of printed <coughs> relatively quick, uh, quickly because uh, the, the tool generates the tool paths and not cut up a, a uninformed piece of geometry into the tool paths. So to conclude, uh, the main uh, objectives were to allow designers a kind of geometric means of reasoning about shape uh, and shape of 3D printed concrete, um, uh, and also to provide exa exemplars of the novel, uh, novel geometries in the design space. And the, the main insight uh, that we're using is like to apply methods of design and analysis from masonry uh, uh, and scaling it down and adapting it to, to design of 3D printed geometries. Um, and therefore, um, extending like equilibrium methods like the RBE uh, to, to uh, fabrication feasibility, uh, what we are calling the soft rigid RB, uh, SRBE. So brief outlook, these methods can be used to uh, uh, kind of, uh, we can provide suggestions to improve feasibility in case things are not feasible. Uh, it can fully be extended to 3D. 
um, as, as previously mentioned. And it can then perhaps also be applied back into masonry where currently uh, uh, the mortar, uh, the uh, time-dependent hardening of the mortar is usually not considered in the design of such masonry structures. And uh, perhaps left field application is uh, use of the method in like uh, areas like um, other soft bridging materials like food printing. So um, again, to re-emphasize the main out, uh, desire is to explore the associated design space. Um, so, thank you very much. <laughs>